Hey sixth graders, welcome to another video tutorial by Mr. Gillis. Um, please start by putting your name and date up on the top. And today we're going to be moving to chapter two, section one. And hopefully my pen works here. Check, yep. And uh, the title of chapter two is Fractions and Decimals. And the second section, or excuse me, the first section is multiplying fractions. I'm just going to abbreviate that here. Multiplying fractions. And for our learning target, it is I can multiply. So I can multiply fractions by fractions. Okay. Um, and we'll step up the game a little bit and do some multiplying by improper fractions as well. Um, but um, I've seen a bunch of you do this already, so I know you're at least familiar with the topic, which is great. Let's just dive into the notes here and see what else we need to learn. So for our first key idea um, with multiplying fractions, in words, uh, to explain how to do this, how to multiply fraction, you would say multiply the numerators multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators and multiply the denominators. If you don't quite remember um, on a, any given fraction, the top number is your numerator and the bottom number is your denominator. Okay, um, if I were to represent that in numbers, say I had the fraction 3 sevenths, and I was multiplying that by oh, a half, okay, you'd take the top numbers times each other, so 3 times 1, and the denominators are the bottom numbers times each other, so 7 times 2, and that would give you your answer, so 3 times 1 is 3, and seven times two is 14, three fourteenths would be your answer. Okay, so that's the gist, that's the basics of today. Let's see a few examples and what that might look like in a homework problem. All right, example one, just like I just got done saying, multiply your numerators together. So um, one times one and your denominators, so five times three. 1 times 1 on top would give me 1. And on the bottom, 5 times 3 would be 15. And you're done. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Next one, example 2, is where we're multiplying fractions that have common factors. Okay. And some of you might already see this, but you can simplify first, or you can simplify in the end of your problem. Um, Either way works, and I'll kind of show you both here. So if I'll just sim multiply like we've been doing. I'll take my top times my top, which is 24, and my bottom times my bottom would give me 9 times 4 would be 36. Okay, and then if I wanted to simplify this, I'd have to ask myself, do I have any um, common factors between 24 and 36? Uh, yeah, each of them have a common factor of 6, so I could divide by 6 on top and bottom. Uh, 24 divided by 6 would give me 4, and 36 divided by 6 would give me 6. I see that I'm not quite simple enough yet because both of these are still even, so I could divide them both again by 2. 4 divided by 2 would be 2, and 6 divided by 2 would be 3, so I come up with 2 thirds. Okay? That's one way to do this problem, but you just have to simplify in the end. The other way is you could actually simplify right off the bat. Um, and some people refer to this as cross simplification. So they look um, diagonally here. So they see, okay, eight and four both have a common factor of four. I could divide each by four. Four divided by four is one and 8 divided by 4 is 2, 
and they'll do the same thing for 9 and 3. They have a common factor of 3, so I can divide each one of these by 3. 9 divided by 3 would be 3, and 3 divided by 3 would be 1. And now they multiply across, so 2 times 1 would give me 2, and 3 times 1 would give me 3. Hey, that's the same exact answer as I got doing it this way. Either method will work there when you have common factors. Okay, go ahead, uh, try out the on your own problems, one through four. Pause the video and then come back once you have your answers. Again, if you don't come up with the right answer, please ask either a neighbor for help or come ask me. Okay, for the answers for the on your own, uh, number one, you should come up with five twelfths and that is in simplest form. They don't have any other common factors. Uh, number two, you should come up with seven thirty seconds. And again, this is as simple as it gets. Number three, probably had to do a little simplifying there to come up with two sevenths in simplest form. And lastly, for number four, two fifteenths. Again, you could do a little simplifying in that problem. So don't forget about this. If you don't simplify in your answers, it'll be about marked half wrong on your assignments. So make sure to put it in simplest form. Okay, moving on to the real life application. It says you have two thirds of a bag of flour and you use Emma three fourths. Sorry for the interruption there. You use three fourths of the flour to make empanada dough. Sounds delicious. How much of the entire bag do you use to make the dough? Okay, so just like before, we're going to take these two fractions and we're going to multiply them. Okay, so I have uh, three fourths times two thirds or two thirds times three fourths. Remember, order doesn't matter when you're mu just multiplying. Okay, before I multiply, I'm gonna simplify. So I see two and four have a common factor of two. Divide each by two, that would give me one and two. And three and three, well, both can be divided by three, which would give me one. Okay, and when I multiply across, one times one, and one times two. Okay, so uh, you use half of the entire bag. Okay, would be my answer there. Moving on next to the key idea, and this time we've got uh, mixed numbers. Okay, so. The way that you would go about this is you would write each mixed number as an improper fraction first. Okay, so I'm going to say first. Write each number or write each mixed number as an improper fraction. Okay. Then, after that, you just multiply like we've been doing before. Okay. Then, multiply as you would with fractions. In other words, top times top, bottom times bottom, or numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Okay, so let's try that out here in example four. You see that my um, recording time is coming to an end, so I will pause here and I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, I'm back. Picking up an example four. First thing I see is that I've got a half times two and three fourths. And two and three fourths is a mixed number. 
So what I need to do is I need to write each mixed number as an improper fraction. Okay, remember an improper fraction is where your numerator is greater than your denominator. Okay, if you don't quite remember how to do that, I'll show you here quickly. You have to take your whole number, which is two, multiply that by your denominator. So two times four would give me eight, and then add your numerator. So eight plus three will give me 11. And I keep the same denominator of four. So two and three fourths as an improper fraction would be 11 fourths. If I wanna double check that, I can ask myself how many times does four go into 11 times? That would be two whole times, which would be eight. Two times four is eight. And then there's three left over to get to 11 and four is my denominator, so that's right, okay? And then multiply as you would with fractions. So I just need to take this now which is 11 fourths and multiply it by a half. Okay, on the top I've got 11 times one, which would give me 11. And then on the bottom, I've got four times two, which would give me eight. Okay, my numerator is still greater than my denominator, so this is still an improper fraction. I'll try to rewrite that as a mixed number again. So eight goes into 11, one whole time, and one times eight is eight, and I have three left over to get to 11, and keep my denominator of eight. So one and three eighths would be my answer. Okay, and let's just check to make sure and to see if that makes sense. Okay, so if I were to estimate two and three fourths would round to about three, and I'm taking a half and multiplying it by three, so a half of three is about one and a half. Did I get close to one and a half with my answer here? Yeah, it's relatively close because if I took one more eighth, it would be one and four eighths, which is the same thing as one and a half. So yes, that is reasonable that I came up with that answer. Okay, example five is where I multiply two mixed numbers now. So it's uh, the same deal. I'll make them both into improper fractions and then uh, multiply as I would. So I have one times five, which is five, plus four is nine fifths. Keep my same denominator. And I'll do the same with my other mixed number. Three times three is nine, plus two is 11 and keep my denominator of three. Okay, this time before I multiply, I'm gonna simplify. I see that nine and three have a common factor of three, so I can divide each by three. Three divided by three is one, nine divided by three is three, and now I'll multiply across. Three times 11 would give me 33, and five times one would give me five. And I'll take this and rewrite it then into uh, mixed number, five goes into 33, six whole times, which would be 30, and I have three left over to get to 33, and my denominator stays five. So six and three fifths would be my answer. Go ahead and move on then to the last example, which is the real life application. It says a city is resurfacing a basketball court. Find the area of the court. Okay, basketball court right here is in the shape of a rectangle and our formula for that is length times width. Okay, so I just need to multiply my two numbers for length and width here and I'll come up with my answer. Okay, so I've got area equals Length is 21 and one third meters times my width, which is 13 and a half meters. Again, I've got two mixed numbers, so I'll change them to improper fractions. 21 times three would give me 63 plus one would be 64 thirds times 13 times two would give me 26 plus one is 27 
halves. Okay. Before I multiply, I will simplify. 64 and 2 are even, so I can divide them each by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 64 divided by 2 would give me 32. 27 and 3 have a common factor of 3. 3 divided by 3 would give me 1. 27 divided by 3 would give me 9. Okay. Then all I need to do is multiply across. 32 times 9. Okay, well, 32 times 10 would be 320, so it should be a little less than that. If I multiply those two, I'd come out with 288 over uh, 1 times 1 is 1. So remember that anything over itself is just anything. So 288 divided by 1 is just 288. Okay, so 288. And since it's a word problem, don't forget about your label. Meters, and we're talking about area here, so meters squared. We're taking meters times meters. That's where we get our squared from. So 288 meters squared for the surface of the basketball court. Okay. Hopefully that was a good refresher for you on multiplying fractions. Like I said before, I think you guys have a pretty good understanding of this. So hopefully that helped clear up a few things for you. Again, as always, let me know if you have any questions and good luck on your practice.